Hey everyone, how's it going? It's been about a year since I've carved Black Sad Summer in the Shadows. And, well, of course, I'm going to be talking about the sequel. So, let's not, you know, uh, delay any further and finally dive into the cold, cold heart of the Arctic Nation. Just a reminder that the Arctic Nation is collected along with the third story, uh, My Red Soul, into this one trade. So, yeah. Whatever. Let's get started. A brief recap on the comic's history. Black Sad is a Spanish comic written by Juan diaz Gonzalez and the art done by Juanjo Granindo. And a special shout out to my buddy Captain Omni, who actually was the one to tell me that the reason Granindo's art style has a Disney, uh, you know, feel to it is because he actually did work at Disney. He did the animation for several Disney characters, such as Hades, uh, the Panther Sabor from Tarzan, and Helga from Atlantis, the Lost Empire. And okay, just again, to clarify, just because he worked for Disney, it ain't for kids. The story was first published in the 2000s and would later be translated into French, German, and English. Three of the stories in the series will be published in one trade under Dark Horse Publishing. The series takes place in an anthropomorphic version of 1950s America and follows the adventures of a cat named John Blackshead, who works as a private eye, who last time we saw was investigating the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Link down below for the review if you want to see it. And to anyone new in my channel that's wondering why that one is way better quality than my videos I do now, and more, you know, consistent with the formula, well, long story short, 2020, man. And if you saw that review, you guys would know that I really like the story, but I mentioned that this sequel is my favorite. Why? Well, let's talk about the story. Warning spoilers. We open in a small town known as The Line, where we see Black Sad witnessing a gruesome aftermath of a murder. A black bird was found hung, and it was done by this group known as the Arctic Nation, a group who has a deep hatred for anyone with non-white fur or feathers. Essentially, they're supposed to be every you know, racist group you could think of put together. There, Black Sad meets Weekly, a journalist who John is not a fan of when he first meets. After that, Black Sad ends up meeting up with his old school teacher, Miss Gray, who asks him to help look for a missing child, a girl named Kyle. And though it's most likely linked to the Arctic Nation, the police are pinning it all on another group known as the Black Claws, who are obviously a reference to the Black Panthers. And no, they don't have a Black Panther in their group, I guess it would be. Obvious. After witnessing one of the nation's rallies led by an arctic fox by the name of Huck, he runs into Weekly again. But this time Weekly offers him a hand and friendship and invites him to lunch. They go to a local diner where they encounter Huck and his boys harassing an old blind magpie by the name of Cotton, since apparently this place is a whites only establishment, which means both Black Sad and Weekly are on their sights too, which leads to Black Sad kicking the ever loving crap out of them. The two end up at the local police station where we meet the chief of police, a polar bear by the name of Karop, who as you can probably guess is clearly the true leader of the Arctic nation while Huck is his second in command. Karapa lets him off with a warning, but of course, they aren't gonna just leave the kid in danger. This leads to Black Sound Weekly going into a blizzard of secrets, brutal murders, and a twist ending that made my jaw drop. Unfortunately, no bug collecting. The story is fantastic. Kenzel once again impresses me with how much research he clearly did to make this emulate the time period. This also plays more with the animal side of things. In the first story, the anthropomorphic element was kind of like the movie Fritz the Cat, where it really is just there for more symbolic reasons and not very useful. Like the birds in both Fritz the Cat and in this book series don't actually fly, they walk like everyone else does. But here we actually have Black Sad acknowledge one of the parts of being a cat since he can use his heightened senses with cases. It does have some downsides since that means his smell is also very much sensitive to the point where he admits one of the reasons he didn't like Weekly that much was because Weekly reeked. As for the mystery, it's actually the opposite of the first mystery at a kind of lackluster payoff. While in here, we know who's behind it, but when it comes to learning the truth, I'll repeat, jaw-dropping. As the characters, of course, I'm gonna start with John, who in here, though, is still a great combination of charismatic smooth talker and tough as nails detective, he also plays off more seriously, which makes sense since he's in a town where a lot of people want to see both him and Weekly dead. There's also a more compassionate version of John. Besides the fact that this involves a missing child, he's also shown to be very much one to 
to do more to help them. But unfortunately, he's in a position where he can only do as much as he can. John also gets to be way more badass in the story. As I mentioned, the diner, he really shows that he does not care about these Arctic Nation guys. And, and though he is aware that, yes, saving Kyle is way more important, he will find some time to kick the crap out of them. Next, we got John's new sidekick, Weekly, who is a pretty okay character. The reason for his name is because apparently he only shows up at a job once a week. And as for his dynamic of Black Sand, it's pretty great. He's shown that he's very skilled at what he does and isn't just a blowhard when he talks about how good he is at being a reporter. He did start out a little annoying at first, but he quickly gets better as the story goes on. Crop is someone who knows how to make himself look like the man, well, bearer of the people, while in reality orchestrating the murders that go on in the town. And with him also being the chief of police, you know Black Sad's gonna have trouble getting around the town. With the secret he hides, I won't spoil it, but let's just say you ain't gonna look a polar bear the same way again. As for his right-hand man, Huck, he definitely starts out seemingly loyal to Kara, up and he definitely knows how to keep his composure, but under that, there is a guy who is tired of playing leader and is ready to actually be one. These two are both sick, twisted bastards, and throughout the story, you want Black Sad to take them down. As for other characters like Miss Gray, Cotton, and some of the characters I didn't even mention, like Kyle's mother, I can't say too much, mostly because it could lead to major spoilers, but I'll say this, they are very memorable, even when some of them only have maybe one or two scenes to themselves. As for Grenino's art, it's as stunning as ever, and you really get the sense of the cold when you look at the snow. And these are shadows, my god, they're so great. In fact, there's one image alone and with how it's written i would really like to see these two team up to work on a batman book my only real well i wouldn't say issue but it is something that has left me a bit curious it was something that was in the first story but it wasn't so prominent that i felt like i had to address it yet but in here yeah, I gotta address it. And that being how Granindo draws his female characters. Because you see, when it comes to the male characters, it's pretty consistent of how much of them is the animal and how much of them is the human. But with the female characters, yeah, it always goes back and forth. Sometimes they look more animalistic, sometimes they look less animalistic, and I can't really figure out why. At first I thought maybe it was like a fan service thing, but as we find out later in the fourth story, A Silent Hell, there's a point where we go to a gentleman's club and yeah a lot of the women there are scantily clad but yet it's very imbalanced some do look more human than others and some look more animalistic than others it's just kind of odd it doesn't completely ruin the story for me but it's just something i just noticed that i can't really seem to get an answer for hell i know i'm not the only one that knows this just look at this here someone actually was able to do a little bit of an ed to make them look more animal like i don't know if granito ever gave an answer for it but if you know let me know in the comments but for now it's not too bad i mean it's not cat's level of bad, but it's definitely not B-stars when it comes to how well they're able to balance it out. Besides that, Black Sad and the Arctic Nation is an amazing story that will definitely fulfill your love of the noir genre. If this doesn't get you into Black Sad, I don't know what will. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.